founder and president of the Media Research Center, a Ted Cruz supporter. Brent, thanks so much for being with us. Really appreciate it. It's an interesting time, no, in the Ted Cruz campaign. A lot of people saying he should do this. A lot of people saying he should do that. And some supporters, including these Iowa guys, Steve Deese and Bob Vanderplatz, they both said overnight, essentially, Ted Cruz should stop going after Marco Rubio. Stop talking about Marco Rubio at all and direct all of his attention toward Donald Trump. Your thoughts? Well, first, let me separate the Media Research Center from Brent Bozell personally, because one can't endorse and one can. And I have obviously endorsed uh, Ted Cruz. Uh, I, I agree with that sentiment in this sense. I, I think it's time for t Ted Cruz to take the gloves off. You know, he has been hit by one cheap shot after another by both Donald Trump and Marco Rubio. Now, I'm not suggesting any cheap shots. I'm suggesting he go full frontal against them. He go after Marco Rubio for the lies he's taking. He goes after Donald Trump for the position that he's been a fraud in this campaign, espousing an ideology that up until this campaign he never believed in uh, across the board. I think that he's in a relatively good position. Here's why. With all the media hype about Donald Trump, we've only seen 5% of the vote. In Texas, you'll have 100, and, and by the way, Ted Cruz is going to win Texas. He has 155 electoral votes. That's twice what Trump has won already. If Cruz wins that, when he wins that, I think Marco Rubio is out of the campaign, especially because Rubio will lose his own state on March 15th. It'll be a two-man race, which is exactly what Ted Cruz wanted. And it's fascinating you talk about the two-man race, because that's what Ted Cruz wants. That's what Ted Cruz says is really actually happening. But Ted Cruz also says that if you are uh, about Donald Trump, if you are the 65 percent of people who don't want Donald Trump and don't think he can take on Hillary Clinton, there is one candidate that you will support. Listen here to Ted Cruz last night. If you are one of the 65 percent of Republicans across this country who doesn't think Donald is the best candidate to go head to head with Hillary, who believes we do better in elections when we actually nominate a conservative, <laughs> then the first four states have performed a vital function of narrowing this race and presenting a clear choice. Donald Trump laughs at that suggestion. He says if Kasich, Rubio, and Carson drop out, the voters are going to come to him too, not just Ted Cruz. Why do you think Ted Cruz is right there then? Because the polling data backs him up. The polling data back up the fact that the that the only person who loses to Hillary Clinton at this point is Donald Trump. Every other candidate beats her. And the polling data also are showing that in a head to head matchup between Cruz and and uh, Trump, that Cruz wins overwhelmingly against Trump. So that's the data. Uh, and that's what he's referring to. With Donald Trump, it's bluster, bluster, bluster. And I think there's going to come a point where there's going to be serious attention paid to his record by, with all due respect, by the press, which the press is so infatuated by the guy, they've got to, be, they've got to start looking at his actual record. You know, you know, Brett, has there been a rough patch in the Cruz campaign? I mean, Ted Cruz lost evangelicals in South Carolina, lost evangelicals in Nevada. These are both groups that, in theory, Ted Cruz, you think, would do very strongly with, would win. You know, and again, not to quote these Iowa guys, but Steve Deese, who is a supporter of Ted Cruz like you, he said, last week, Trump debated the Pope in Islam, and we debated Rubio on videos and Photoshop. Nobody cares about that stuff. Does there need to be a change in the Cruz campaign? Oh, I think so. And I think you're going to see it. I, I think that, look, you know, if if uh, if he were in first place, we wouldn't be having this conversation. Uh, but he did come in third last night. Let's be honest about it. But that said, it, it's got a long, long ways to go. And these campaigns go up and down. And he's got the money. Everybody knows he's got the funds to stay in this for the long haul, which most other candidates haven't had so far. And I wonder if Marco Rubio is going to have that. Certainly Cases doesn't have that. Certainly Carson's not going to have that. Uh, but Cruz does have that. So it'll be a two man race. Real quick, Brett, you really think that it is the media, the media's fault that Donald Trump is, is, is running the board right now in these states. You don't think this has anything to do with how Ted, what voters think of Ted Cruz or Marco Rubio or what voters think of Donald Trump. You think it's the media's fault so far? Oh, no. No, I didn't say that. I, I think the media are the playing a, game, a, a role in this. I, I think that there is infatuation. You, you're going to be covering Donald Trump live. When was the last time you covered a Cruz speech live or a Rubio speech whenever live? I don't know live, the answer. Whenever but, they're uh, live in our hour. Uh, 
I don't know about that. But look, <laughs> there's no question when Mar when when you know, we did an analysis with the MRC and Donald Trump is getting more coverage than 16 other candidates combined. Think about that. Just, we just heard from a voter, Mike Kunkel, mm -hmm. in Virginia, about to hear Donald Trump. And the first words out of his mouth was Donald Trump was an outsider. That is something that's resonating, Brent, no? Yeah, and if there's a serious conversation about him, you will find out that he's the ultimate insider who brags about the deals he makes with Washington, who has praised Hillary Clinton, has called himself a Democrat, talks about working with Washington, talks about making deals with them. That's the real Donald Trump. I, I, I think the conversation needs to be had. It Brent definitely Brazil. will be yeah. one of the conversations on the stage Thursday night for that big CNN debate. Brent, thanks so much for coming on. I hope you come on yeah. again. It was fun having you on the show. Thanks, Thank you, Brent. folks. Thank you. Thank you.